Hi, everyone. Welcome to Removing Roadblocks to Getting Published. Our speaker today is Aaron Healy, who will present Preparing Your Novel Summaries for Agents and Editors. Aaron is a novelist and award-winning fiction editor and writing coach for numerous best-selling authors. She is the owner of WordWrite Editorial Services and brings more than 25 years of experience to her editorial philosophy, which at its heart is about empowering stories to bridge the gap between authors and readers. Her books include such thrilling stories as Stranger Things, Motherless, and with Ted Decker, Kiss and Burn. As a partner with Writing for Your Life, Erin speaks at our conferences and offers several types of editorial and consulting services. Check out her page on the Writing for Your Life website to learn more. And um, after Erin's presentation, uh, feel free to, answer, uh, to ask questions um, by typing them into the Q&A feature on the webinar screen. So with that, uh, take it away, Erin. Thanks for joining us. Brian, thank you. I'm really glad to be with you today. It's a pleasure to be part of Writing for Your Life. Uh, so thank you, everybody, who could make it today. It's really great to get to know you a little bit. Um, today, what I want to talk about is, is how to take a 400-page story, a 100,000-word story, and turn it into a synopsis that really accomplishes the purpose of grabbing an editor's or an agent's attention. Very difficult to do that, um, and it does require a little bit of practice and some skill, so hopefully I will be giving you those things that you need today. Let me get this presentation up for you. Just a second here. All right, so here we go. I hope if my computer will act up. There we go. Looks great. Your novel in a nutshell is what I like to call this seminar. Um, and the very first thing that, uh, that I want to say is that there are a lot of different terms that are used when we talk about summaries and synopses. Don't worry, there isn't a universal standard. You will see different words for different things as you go to agents' websites and editor publishing houses sites. Um, don't worry about that too much, but hopefully today in this discussion I'll give you some um, pretty consistent explanations for what we're talking about. So the most important thing for you to understand when you're getting ready to turn your novel into a summary is what you're trying to accomplish. What is the purpose of the different types of summaries you'll be writing? I'll be talking about five of them today. The first two are the chapter by chapter or scene by scene summary and the synopsis. The purpose of these two is to inform the agent or editor of everything you can about your story concisely as possible. These are summaries that you'll be using in a proposal. The second type of summaries we'll be talking about um, are the elevator pitch, the blurb and the headline, and the through line. The purpose of these summaries is to attract the interest of potential readers. These are the types of very short, brief summaries you'll be using in your query. Um, you might be using them in a one sheet that you take to a writing conference. You might use them when you have a sudden unexpected opportunity um, to make a pitch in a one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face meeting. So these are the five types we'll be talking about today. First, I want to start with some general principles of how to approach your summaries. Um, and the first one of all is that finish your novel first. You cannot sell a novel today if it's not completed. Um, there will be some exceptions. If you're a multi-published author, you might get a, get a contract for books you haven't written yet. But generally speaking, people don't want to purchase a novel that isn't complete. So finish your novel before you write your summary. Anything you write before then um, is great in so far as it helps you get your novel written. But please don't expect to use that working document for your pitch materials. You're going to wait until your novel's finished. The second principle is write long to short. And what I mean by this is we're going to start with writing the longest types of summaries first. And then we're going to move from long summaries to shorter and shorter, shorter forms, until the last one that you write is just a one-sentence summary or teaser of your book. The reason for doing this is that it actually helps you bring clarity and focus and an economy of words to your stories. So it's the most easy way to go about it, even though you're not going to be using those longer summaries until 
after you baited the hook and got them to read your query. So it's a little bit backward, but trust me, stay with me, it will make sense later. Um, third principle is to use an active, present tense, third person voice. This is just a typical style. It's a the tradition, if you will, a convention of writing summaries. Keep them in the present tense. Even if your narrative is told in the first person voice, go ahead and use a third person narrative for your summaries. It is the easiest way to make a connection with your agent or editor. And finally, simplify, simplify, simplify. Everything we're trying to do today is more about an economy of words than any kind of you know, poetic or artistic expression. Here's a list uh, for you of what editors and agents are seeking in the summaries that you deliver to them. These are the kinds of questions that are not answered in a query letter or in a teaser or on a back cover copy. They're looking for a lot of information. Does the story fit its category? Does it have the potential to shine in its category? Is the story fresh and surprising? These are big picture, 30,000 foot view impressions that they will gain from your summaries. Are the characters appealing and properly motivated? Do their behaviors make sense? Does the plot intrigue? Does it flow logically and believably? Um, you want to make sure in these chapter by chapter summaries or in your synopses that the events make sense. You'd be surprised how often they don't. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Will the readers be, or excuse me, are the themes evident in the events? And will readers be satisfied? And most of all, does the story fulfill the promises of the proposal? That is the number one reason right there why acquisitions editors no longer will take manuscripts that are not completed. It's because too many authors just failed to deliver on their promises. So you want to prove that you're delivering what you've promised. Okay, the chapter by chapter summary is the most direct and straightforward. You are moving through your summary in a very uh, linear fashion that parallels your book structure. In the chapter by chapter summary, um, the most important principle for you to know is that you need to tell everything. Again, in this summary, agents and editors are looking for information. This is not the time to tease them with cliffhangers or big questions. These are not these are summaries, they're informative. You want to focus on the plot, what happens, and the players, who it happens to. And here's just a list of things that, um, in my opinion, are the most important elements to hit on. You need to be able to summarize each chapter in one or two sentences. If you're taking more then, well, let's say two or three sentences. It depends on how long your chapters are and what your genre is and all that. If it's taking you more than two or three sentences to tell each chapter, you're probably not focused enough. So use these elements to guide you as far as what to say in each section. What are your character relationships to each other? Is the chain of events clear? Again, we're going to talk about characters' behavior and motives. It needs to be very clear why your characters do what they do. What is compelling them to act the way they act? Protagonists' outer and inner journeys, these of course are your character arcs, your main character's story arc, and your protagonist's success or failure. What is the outcome of this story? You wouldn't believe how many summaries I've read where it doesn't tell the ending. You need to tell everything in these summaries. And finally, use direct language. Again, be clear, concise, and informative. Don't worry about being poetic. Don't worry about writing anything foolish or worry worthy in these summaries. Um, just be very specific and clear. This synopsis, if the, if the chapter by chapter summary is just a blow-by-blow, blow, literal following of your book. The synopsis is more abstract. The synopsis you could consider your book reports. Um, I remember writing those in elementary school or junior high school. The, the synopsis is the book report. It's not an analysis. Um, it's not a review. It's just a report of what happens. You want your synopsis, no matter how long it is, to include these elements. Um, the context of the story world, which is 
where your story happens and when. Is it set in the period of time? Is it futuristic, etc.? Your primary characters, your central characters, these are your protagonist and the key characters who have an essential relationship with that person. Um, the shorter the synopsis, the fewer characters you need to mention. And let me just talk about length of synopsis really quickly before I go on. Um, Synopsis will range anywhere from 300 to maybe 1,500 words. How long should your synopsis be? It should be as long as the agent or editor has requested. On everybody's submission guidelines, you will see um, specific requests for limits on how long these synopses can be. Write up to those limits. Maximize your space and your word counts, but don't go over it. I think it's a very good practice for all novelists to write, say, three summaries. Uh, write one that's 400 words, write one that's about 750 words, and write one that's about 1,000 to 1,200 words. If you have those three in your hopper ready to go out at any time, you can make very minor adjustments to meet the requirements of just about any agent or editor who will ask for your material. So go ahead and think about writing several synopses of different lengths. Okay, so conflict is the third element you want to put in your synopsis. Who, um, who is your protagonist and what is their goal? What stands in the way of meeting that goal? That's very simply what conflict is. Um, what is the primary objective? Of the central plot line, of course, the events. What are the major things that happen? You might start with a backstory in your synopsis, and I do recommend you keep your synopses linear, even if they don't necessarily follow the structure of your story. And of course, in the plot line, tell the ending, tell what happens. I'll just keep repeating that ad nauseum. Um, you can also include, if you want to, if space allows, the compelling emotions of your story. Um, there's, there's no need to rob your summary of that and make it clinical. It's okay to have an emotional or a more sensory tone in your book. Um, but that might go depending on your word count constraints. And then by change, I mean the, the key events that lead to your protagonist's change of heart or change of character, change of circumstance, um, and that sort of thing. And comprehension. Comprehension is a really good way to test your synopses um, for their effectiveness. Take your synopsis that you have written to a reader who doesn't know anything about your story and ask them if it makes sense. Does this synopsis make sense to you? Does it give you enough information to tell you the big picture of what my story is about? You can get a lot of, of um, information from readers there. Pay attention to places where they express confusion about what's happening in your story rather than those places when they're where they say, oh, I'd like more information. That's great, but pay, pay attention to places where they're confused. Those are places where you might have to do more work. Okay, so those are the two main types of uh, summaries, the chapter by chapter summary and the synopsis. Now we're going to get into the types of, of summaries where the purpose is to tease your a reader, you try to attract an attentional reader, hook them into your story. These are getting shorter than your chapter by chapter summaries, which are the longest, the synopses, which might come up to about 1,500 words. I'm going to start with your elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is a teaser that's only going to be in that 50 to 7,500 word, um, 50, excuse me, 50 to 75 word category. And this is something that you want to make memorable and memorizable. It's a formula. Um, there are formulas for elevator pitches. I'm going to give you two of them, but if you go Google elevator pitch, you will find many other formulas that you can use um, to come up with a really effective one. This, um, this is a formula that James Scott Bell, the novelist, um, recommends, and I think it's very effective. It's a three-sentence pitch. In the first sentence, you name your character, what they do, and what their initial situation is. In sentence number two, you have a when statement. He calls this the doorway of no return. I might call it 
your novel's inciting event, the key thing that pushes your character into their storyline. And then sentence number three, now, it's a now statement and what he calls the death stakes. He doesn't mean necessarily physical life or death, what are the stakes on the table? What terrible thing will happen if your characters cannot accomplish their goal? So in the case of Romeo and Juliet, which is the story I used to teach a longer version of this workshop, um, this, this elevator pitch would say, Romeo and Juliet are teenagers from feuding families. When they meet at a party and fall in love, before they even learn each other's names, no barrier will keep them apart. Now set against the hopes and fury of their families, the price of Romeo and Juliet's passion will cost them more than they can foresee. Only 56 six words, it takes less than a minute to say it. Saying it aloud, you might find your elevator pitches have a little bit of a Hollywood dramatic voice to them that makes you kind of uncomfortable. Use this when you're writing it down and then practice saying it in a way that feels natural and uh, not awkward for you. If somebody said, hey, what's your story about? You can rattle off this thing you've memorized and um, not feel at all awkward about it. So that just takes practice. Another kind of, uh, of um, elevator pitch that is recommended by Dwight Swain. He's the author of uh, Storytelling Techniques for the Fiction Writer. It's an old book with a lot of timeless principles in it. Um, White recommends an even shorter version of an elevator pitch with, that it comprises a statement and a question and includes these five elements, the situation, the character, the objective, the opponent, and the disaster. So I have in this, um, in this example down here put numbers next to each of those elements kind of so you can identify what they are. When their feuding families object to their love, two young teens seek happiness by marrying in secret. That's the statement part of the summary. But is their passion enough to overcome the murder that casts a shadow across their wedding night? There's your question, and you get your opponent and disaster in there. So those are two types of elevator pitches. Um, you want to make sure your pitch is memorizable and catchy and easy for you to spout off quickly. The blurb is the second type of summary that's meant to tease or attract. This is something that you might include, um, say, on the back of, of a book, um, on your website, on your um, one sheet. Think of the blurb as your book's movie trailer. It's only going to be 100 to 200 words, and it basically uses the structure of your pitch and adds a couple more layers to it. When you're writing the blurb, you have a little bit more elbow room to use vocabulary, to use a tone that matches your narrative voice. If you've written a humor novel, make your blurb funny. If you've written a dystopian novel, make it feel ominous. If you've written a romance, make it feel very, you know, in, very environmentally sensual. Just use something that expresses um, the nature of what the reader can expect to read when they crack open the book. Make use of adjectives. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. We're told so often as novelists, you need to show and not tell. The blurb is kind of an exception to that rule. Feel, feel free to, to tell. You, you only have one or two hundred words and you're not going to have a lot of time to paint a picture. So use adjectives to accomplish some of the things you might otherwise do when you're writing your narrative and trying to show. Um, use paragraphs. Don't put all 200 words in a big block. Break it into really readable, short, catchy snippets. Of course, if, avoid cliches. Um, hook readers with story questions by, you know, to tease them and entice them. And then you want to focus on your reader's curiosity. What's at stake? Stakes are always important, no matter what genre the novel is. What will happen if your readers don't, if your characters don't accomplish their goal? That's what you want to convey in the blurb. That's the hook that pulls us in. And, and as I just said, the story mood and the tone. All right. The last type of summary, and this is the ultimate nutshell, is just one sentence long. Um, 
all that's in this through line will be your protagonist's role and the dramatic conf uh, conflict. You don't even need to name your characters if you don't want to. It's much more about the core idea. Um, so you might recognize these through lines. Th through lines are originally used, um, they were called log lines, which, is, which was used in the movie industry to log information about movies um, when, this, when screenwriters would submit their manuscripts. So the through line is, is just like that. And these examples down here um, are from movies that you, that you might recognize. A computer hacker learns from mysterious rebels about the true nature of his reality and his role in the war against its controllers. That's The Matrix. Um, the aging patriarch of an organized crime dynasty transfers control of his clandestine empire to his reluctant son, of course, the godfather. And a classic, a wheel-bound photographer spies on his neighbors from his apartment window and becomes convinced one of them has committed murder. I will let you puzzle that one out yourself if it's not totally obvious to you. Um, it, it can be really simple, but also very difficult to get these just right. Um, but again, by the time you've spent time working from the really large format down to this shorter one, you will find certain phrases, certain core ideas have taken shape and solidified along the way, and they will make this part of the exercise much easier. Um, so in summary, what you want to do is get an agent or editor to read your proposal by teasing them with that great elevator pitch, a really good blurb. Sometimes your blurbs are short enough to include in a query letter. Play with that a little bit. See what the agent's requirements are. And then secondly, to get an agent or editor to read your whole manuscript by teasing them with a great, I, I wrote blurb here, and I'm sorry about that. I meant a great synopsis or summary. Um, that gives them all the information they need. When they have the information that says this story is going to be worth your while, that's when they will read your manuscript. So hopefully these principles will give you a great starting place. And um, yeah, let me know what questions you might have going forward here. So thank you so much. Um Aaron, this was really great. Um, maybe if you want to un uh, share your screen, okay, and I'll unpin your video there, so um, we can uh, go into the Q and A uh, section. And if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, feel free to to type them in, <coughs> and we can talk about them. Yeah, I went through a lot of material really, really fast, so I know it's hard when you're trying to think through how do I how do I break down this all these ideas that are in my head into something piecemeal it's hard to put, actually put the story out of your head and become a little bit more objective about the elements um, that someone in an editorial or, or uh, acquisitions position would be wanting to know and really they want to be tantalized and then they want to be informed um, so if you can respect those two things you'll be on your way so one question I have for you Erin and I'm more familiar with the situation in nonfiction than I am in fiction. But in, yeah. in that market, um, it seems as though, you know, the large publishing houses will want to only work through agents. Yes. Right? So that an author's, you know, first step is to uh, get an agent to, you know, to yeah. represent them. But the smaller publishing houses, that's not necessarily the case. Exactly. It's more, you know, directly approachable. Exactly. And so, I might, I, how does that reflect out in your experience regarding fiction? Well, regarding fiction, it is the same. I would say that the prevailing um, principle in fiction is that you have to have a finished manuscript before you can sell it. That's pretty universal. Um, the other thing is that no matter whether you're going through an agent first or through an acquisitions editor first, your story summaries have they have to serve the same purpose. They have to accomplish the same goal. So you want to make really sure when you go to any agent or any publishing house that you tailor your submissions to their requirements. That's why I say if you go through the process of writing all of these summaries, even before you begin submitting, you have a place to begin. Um, so you go to a publishing house and it says, you know, send us your proposal that includes a 750 word summary. You can say, oh, I've already written one that's a thousand words. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to back it down a little bit. 
um, and you've already got your, you'll be on your way, and the submission process will not be so daunting if you have all these ready to go. So during this presentation, you did a wonderfully um, humble job of uh, providing all kinds of information without selling yourself. <laughs> 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 Meaning that we haven't talked at all about the great services that you offer to writers oh, okay. and help them put together, you know, all these different things that you've mentioned as well as obviously, you know, the manuscript itself. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, the different stages at which sure. you help authors and the different things, uh, it, you know, sure. help them with and how that works? Definitely. Um, I do most of my work coaching novelists. Um, well, I, I'll do two different things, but coaching novelists who are unpublished as they're either attempting to finish writing their manuscript um, or when they're in the place where they're getting ready to send it to an agent or author, but they want more editorial input first. I do a lot of content development with novels and also with memoir. Those are the two that I work with most frequently. Um, the other half of my time is spent taking contracts from publishers to work on their novels and memoirs, um, helping the authors prepare them for publication by refining their ideas and such. Um, but for those novelists who are looking for coaching, who are looking to just break into the market, it is really, really difficult for um, first-time novelists to break in. They're trying to decide whether to approach agents and editors. They're trying to decide, you know, whether to self-publish. And by the way, even if your intention is to self-publish, all of these summary tools that I've given you are very useful if you're a self-published author. You can use these materials on your website, on your marketing materials, on whatever platform is printing your book, on your back cover copy. So don't shy away from these exercises even if you don't plan to publish traditionally. Um, finally, you know, these, exer these, these story summaries are sometimes an exercise I'll put an author through to identify where the gaps are in their stories, where they're not hitting the mark. Um, these are really good litmus tests that you can use. Ask yourself those questions. So, um, yeah, I enjoy working with novelists and with memoirists uh, a lot. It's a lot of fun. Another thing we really haven't touched on too much is platform development mm -hmm. <clears throat> for fiction writers, you know, which I think differs considerably yes. than for nonfiction. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen as um, some of the best practices for fiction authors yeah. Yeah. to build their platform? That one is that one's really difficult, and I wish I had a great answer. Um, unfortunately, I don't. I would say that the novelists that I see doing a really good job tend to gather um, gather an audience around them with free stories. Um, a lot of, we see a trend among readers of fiction towards shorter and shorter manuscripts. So you'll see this in traditional publishing houses. They don't want to see anything longer than 120,000 words. They won't even talk to you if your manuscript is that length. Um, perhaps with the exception of science fiction and fantasy. Um, but so there's this trend towards shorter and shorter and shorter novels. If you're writing novels that are in that 60 to 80,000 word range, that's a real sweet spot right now. Um, and then to attract readers in, sometimes novelists are spending a certain amount of time writing what we call flash fiction or novellas or short stories and making those available to readers for free. It's a way of saying, this is the type of story I write. You're not offering your published material, your longer stories for free, but you can hook them with um, just being familiar, you know, sending them a short story once a month. Um, that's the one thing that I think is really good in terms of bringing readers around you. But otherwise, fiction's hard. It's not, it doesn't meet needs in the same way that nonfiction does. And so it's a little harder to sell. It's a little hard, harder to gather your tribe. Um, but it can be done. So uh, I think that's really insightful and helpful. Um, the, the kind of like short things that are giveaways, are those predominantly electronic? Version? Yes, yeah, usually um, through a website, you would usually gain, uh, gain readers' email addresses, which is still, even though younger and younger uh, um, consumers are not using email, it is still the most effective way to reach a market. So in exchange for someone's email address or perhaps um, permission to text their phone, you know, 
That's their phone number. You can collect those by giving away free stories. A lot of people are happy to give you their contact information in exchange for that. And then you can just, if you're consistent, um, you can stay in touch with them that way by continuing to send them free material with no expectation of purchasing anything. That way, when you have a book come out, you know, chances are they'll be happy to hear you say, hey, I have a new book. Um, it's not just about sales pitch. So one other thing I wanted to touch on is that <clears throat> Aaron's going to be presenting at uh, one of our Writing for Your Life conferences coming up soon in Indianapolis. It's uh, March 13th and 14th. Is it, you want to talk about that a little bit, Aaron? About what you're sure, doing? I'd love to. Um, I will be talking about the writing story summaries in a little bit more depth. I'll, I'll spend a little more time on these points and the how-tos of going about it with some examples that we'll work on in class. Um, the other session that I'll be doing will be a little bit more of a community discussion, kind of a roundtable. We'll be talking about the problems that get in the way of us finishing our stories. What are the roadblocks we face ourselves, not in getting published, but just getting our own work done? And uh, they, could, they will range from just cynicism and frustration about the climate and the process, all the way up to the fact, you know, maybe I have preschoolers and just can't find the time. Maybe I am struggling with self-doubt and think nothing sells, I don't have any new ideas. How do we work through that? I am going to have people sharing their own tricks and tips and uh, strategies hopefully to help us continue being really creative in our in our expression uh, without getting bogged down. Well Aaron thank you so much for joining us today this was incredibly useful um, I, I know that uh, you know, all the times we've worked together I've had such great respect for your expertise in this area so thank you for thank sharing you. so much with everyone today. It's a lot of fun thank you for having me Brian. Thanks again everyone bye now. Bye.